Oh. <laughs> well, that's not what I was expecting. Welcome, <laughs> welcome back to semifinal coverage here. Uh, Seth Manfield versus Scott Lip. Seth Manfield, the number one ranked player in the world right now. And Scott Lip, the c number one ranked player in the room right now. <laughs> he and is. He, he did come in at number one seed. And look at, look at this start from Scott Lip. He opens up on a Thraben Inspector. He enchants it with Lunark Mantle, and he gets in for three. Yeah, now we talked about this during the draft portion. This is the all-in nature of the deck that Scott Lip has put together. He has now put up a formidable attacker that's going to be able to attack multiple times, but if it is interacted with, it is going to be really bad for Scott as he's going to be down two cards in the transaction. A, a tattered, tattered, haunter. tattered haunter there yeah. for Seth Manfield. Which can't block unless he gives his Lunark Mantle. Correct. <laughs> That's creature right. Flying. That was a nice use of a clue token there from Scott Lip, yeah. though. He used his uh, Extricator of Sin there to just sacrifice the clue token. That way he can maintain his, his mana advantage and not lose any board presence. And he gets a 3-2 as well. So a ripping quick start here for Scott Lip. Curious to see if Seth can bounce back from this. Seth is on blue-white only and uh, i'm going to look to see if he's got any bounce spells or anything like that because those are the type of cards that can really get him look out under of this d in blue yeah no he does not drag under zero copies and he does have a ghostly wings and a press for answers that can help uh punish this as well as a stitched mangler okay so he's got some stuff it, it's not like he's drawing dead here but he doesn't have the really good answers he has a choking restraint in his deck as well and a Sigardian Priest. So he, he does have decent answers, but he's oh, going to need to find them. Hey, hey, hey. There's a choking restraint. Another interesting sideline uh, story here to keep, keep our eye on as well is that Seth Manfield is in a somewhat awkward position, to be <laughs> honest. Uh, you know, Brian Bronduin is the current leader in the uh, Grand Prix Player of the Year race, which rewards a seat at the World Championship, something that Seth Manfield already has. But if Seth wins the GP, not get second, not wins this match, if he wins the Grand Prix, he will overtake Brian Bronduin, and that will actually free up that slot to the next at-large bid, taking it away from BBD. Wow. Which, you know, and that's... But these are important points for Seth Manfield also. I, I was also. just going to say, this is an important... You know, it's, I mean, obviously, you just always you want to win all the events you can win. That doesn't money. happen very often. Yeah. The money, the pro points, the, there's a player of the year race. Seth has got a comfortable lead over Owen, but not, you know, not a luxurious lead. Yeah, not one that is. It is definitely a surmountable lead. Backward survivalist for Scott Lip there. These two players are teammates, of course, on East-West Bowl. Mm -hmm. Representing each half of the team name. There you get a look at the survivalist. And, uh, you know, Choking Restraints does not turn off any, you know, abilities or anything under there, so, you know, the Scott needs to turn on Delirium at some point. He can start sacrificing things sure. to the Lunark Mantle. Yeah. And I got to say that it was really timely for Seth to find the choking restraints because that really brought him right back in this game. But his other two plays have been not super impactful. Exultant Cultist, though, looks pretty good here against the 3 2 Eldrazi. It really does force Scott to have some way to get past it. Oh, well. no. <laughs> How about an Intrepid Provisioner? Intrepid Provisioner. And Seth is still going to trade off for the Eldrazi, but he is going to take six damage here. Yeah. There you see the Intrepid Provisioner. And it leaves behind a body that tramples later on, too. Yeah. Yeah, so interesting start here from Scott. I mean, he, he went one drop into two drop, made a three power attacker. That got nullified, but he's still being able to curve out, keeping things, as he put it, low to the ground. Seth yeah, Manfield, that was what he on the other hand, describing this deck to me. Yeah, Seth, on the other hand, has had to put together some work here. The Tattered Hunter looks pretty bad when you're behind. He, there's no way he's winning this race as it sits. So the Hunter is, is really a liability as far as creatures go in, in, in this juncture. And uh, all he's been able to do is trade off. Yeah, you, you get a look at Seth there as he tries to figure his way out. One of the things that Scott said that appealed to him about this type of deck is that it, you know, put your opponent back on their heels and they don't, you know, they have to, if they're answering your questions, they're also not asking their own questions. You know, they're true. not, they're not developing their board. Yep. So. 
But, you know, we've seen Seth come out of worse situations than this. Yeah, he's under immense pressure here, though, uh, effectively with zero blockers on the battlefield. And he's he has seven power that he's facing down, and he's only at five life. <laughs> well, <laughs> Tattered Hawker kind of has to attack here. What could Seth have here that would even keep him alive for another turn? Well, any blocker. You can just chump block it in the worst case scenario. But it is not looking good for him. Morph Infiltrator, yes. the chumpiest of blockers. That is not what the doctor ordered here, no doubt about it. And there you see Scott Lip sacrifices a land. To the Lunark Ascension? Yeah. Okay. So he's got a... Oh, look at this. This is three. That's four. He's turned on Delirium. The backward survivalist gets plus one, plus one, and yeah, Seth trampled. had Seth had to have seen that coming. I mean, there's nothing he could do about it. But once Scott sacrificed a land randomly on Seth's end step, <laughs> you're like, this is not going to end well for me. <laughs> That's not how I want this thing to end. Well played from Scott Lip there. Yeah. And then we're going to peek in on Ben Stark and Jan Cassander. And we get a look at their respective boards. And it looks... Well, Jan's, Jan's looks a little Jan better. Looks, <laughs> Not a I ton like better. Uh, there's, there's trade opportunities here for Ben Stark. He's got a Cryptolith Fragment down there as well, though he's got to be careful about using that. <laughs> Do you, how, how do you feel about that card? I like it. I think it's pretty good. There's ah. some matchup where, matchups where it really shines, too. So Ben looks like he wants to trade for the Tooth Collector. Though he could throw it in front of the Stitchwing Scob, though the Advanced Stitchwing is a little too big. So he's just trying to decide between the two. There's a Terrarian for Jan as well on the battlefield. Which means he can easily get to his delirium if he mm. was going to turn on that tooth collector. Yeah, I think it already is as well. Uh, do you see the there's a the Thraven oh, that's Gargoyle a, that's an there? artifact creature, yeah. yeah. So he's just going to okay. turn that off. He played a Pale Rider there. What did he discard? I guess he's going to crack the terrarian here. Is it, did he discard something? It's weird. I, I did not see him discard something because he played it after the tooth collector, and I see the tooth collector is the top card of the graveyard there. I may have missed an interaction there, but... Uh, well, so it was maybe Quizzit. Exiled somehow? It I don't know. Could have been. Yeah. Thermo Alchemist from Ben Stark. A little odd sometimes in the ride down deck. A little out of place. Oh, he had no cards in hand at all. That's what was going on. Oh, okay. Yes. I thought he had a card in his hand, which is why I was confused. Yeah. But this makes a lot more sense. Now he's going to crack the terrarian. Thermo Alchemist not doing much here. Yeah. It's just going to chump block a pale rider. Oh, wow. Ben's down to two. There 
versus Mountain. I think that this game is pretty much a done deal. Yeah, it is. Jan Cassander goes up one game to nothing on the Hall of Famer, and we are going back to our main match, Seth Mayfield versus Scott Lipp, and Seth has a Wharf Infiltrator All on right. turn two. This one could play out a lot differently. One thing that Scott didn't get a ton of is removal, though he does have cards like Prey Upon, which are pretty good against Wolf, Wharf Infiltrator, though I, I guess not with this particular two drop. <laughs> <laughs> Field Creeper's a little small. All right, let's watch how Seth Manfield works his Field Creeper. I mean, his uh, Wharf Infiltrator. Yeah. So it deals combat damage, he gets to draw a card. And then you have to discard a card. So we've seen this card in a couple different forms. But this would be a fine turn if he wanted, if he, especially if he didn't have a better play, to discard a creature. Right. That, that's the question here. If he does so, he can pay two mana and make himself a 3-2 Eldrazi token. And that might be the best thing he can do this turn. Here it goes. Discards the Tattered Haunter. Yeah, the Tattered Haunter that did... He's punishing it for last game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go to your room. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting question you end up asking of your cards. Is this card, you know, worth more or less to me than a 3-2 Eldrazi? Yeah. For two. All right, in comes Field Creeper. And then, it, oh, extra, wow. wow, Extricator of Sin, sacrifice a land, very. Very aggressive. aggressive. Again, it was similar to the first game, right? It, it, it's Scott just sort of moving all in here and just saying, look, I'm, here's what I got. Yeah, first game he had the benefit of being able to do that with a clue at least. Exactly. Well, and, and I was actually referring to the Lunark Ascension. Oh, but, yeah. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the all-in play there. And he did get punished for that, though. He was able to apply enough pressure to take that first game. This is going to be a close one. Yeah. Extricator Sin, though, can block yeah. the Wharf Infiltrator. Yeah, they can. That's pretty it's nice for Scott. Because <laughs> it's not going to do much else here in the early stages, at least. Skulk is not good against zero power creatures. Mm. But Seth is going to attack anyway. Puts the extra creator sin in the path of the infiltrator. We know there's there's what, what kind of tricks could uh, borrowed grace could do it. Yeah, <coughs> get him in for five damage and take down the extricator. Strength of arms if he's playing sure. something like that, which seems like it would be okay in his deck. Yeah, and he's got some options. He also has Scott tapped out. So he kind of has perfect information. He knows that this can't go horribly wrong. He says just take three. Plays his fourth land, an island. Interesting. Okay. Apothecary Geist. Yeah, so he does attack with the Infiltrator there. It gets blocked. He must have assumed, I'm just never blocking with this thing anyway. <laughs> I mean, it is possible that he wants to trade the, the Wharf Infiltrator for the Field Creeper, since it doesn't look like the Wharf Infiltrator is going to be able to get in for damage anytime soon, thanks to the Extricator of Sin. But he, he didn't want that option. He decided just to attack with it as a little bit of a bluff or something. So Scott Lip sends in the Field Creeper and the Eldrazi Horror. And Apothecary Geist is going to step in the way of the 2-1. Yeah, this is multiple combat tricks in hand for Scott Lip here. He can Woodcutter's Grit. He can confront the unknown, though that won't work out super well for him here. But by blocking here, he kind of has forced the issue, and it looks like it's going to be Woodcutter's Grit. The interesting part about this is that while it does take down the Apothecary Geist, that was Scott Lip's turn. Yeah, He's, yep. His turn just evaporated. You see that ghostly wings go on an infiltrate wharf infiltrator? 
It's not impossible, though. I will say the Ghostly Wings is actually pretty good against Scott. He right. can he can place the Ghostly Wings on a card that's picked up a Lunar Ascension and just send it back to his hand. relatively close in the early stages here a 1-1 one, one and a 2-1 one, or 1-1 one, one versus a 2-1 two, and 2-3-2 two, is battling and then the 0 3 is just kind of sitting over there waiting your most likely player of the year for 2015 2016 Seth Manfield sitting there tax with the war for trader again I see. Yeah, now he's going to use strength of arms. Yeah, no, he's just strength of arms there. Yeah. So what that what happened last turn is he he may have thought I'm going to use strength of arms and then changed his mind, or he just wanted to set the precedent that Scott would keep. He, like you, you know, said, blocking. he knew he wasn't going to block with the worst case well, scenario. no, I I think he actually there there is a scenario where you could right, like you can block the field creeper sure. and just trade if, if you don't have a way to get through the O three. So the two Eldrazi tokens trade here. Seth takes another two from the Field Creeper. Yeah, I think Seth has really seen enough of Scott's deck now to get a feel for what's going on over there with the combat tricks and the creature augmentation. And I think Seth has realized that he's probably more likely the control player in this matchup. That's a backward survivalist from uh, Scott Lamp. Yeah, th and this isn't bad. I mean, I if he just attacks and discards a creature, he's already got a card that he can use to trade. Yeah, I mean, if he gets his Field Creeper in the yard, he's got... Uh, then he has Solarium. Yeah. But for Seth, it's not bad either. Like, right now, if he makes a 3-2 Eldrazi, he can already Oh yeah. trade with the uh, Backwoods Survivalist. Assuming that no sorceries hit the bin. All right. Big Bear Paladin gets discarded to the... Warfield for Trader. Yeah, now what what Seth needs to happen here, though, is he needs to play another spell. Like, it doesn't really matter what, but, you know, he wants to get a mana advantage off of that Warf Infiltrator. And it looks like third he's land. got a Fifth third land. land to do it, too. Yeah, this turn. Okay. How about choking restraints on your giant monster? That's fantastic. What a great turn for Seth Manfield. This also takes a lot of the risk away of Scott doing something like prey upon kill your wolf wharf infiltrator. Now I've got delirium attack you for five and, and it just gets kind of ugly from there. <laughs> 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 so this kind uh, of this, th <laughs> I have to say this illustrates go up, the ups up and, and downs <laughs> of Scott Lips deck quite cleanly. Lunark mantle. On my field, on field creeper. creeper. Sacrifice my backward survivalist to give it flying in addition to the plus two, plus two. W once you utter the phrase, I'm going to play <laughs> Lunark Ascension, or Lunark Mantle, excuse me, on my field creeper, <laughs> 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 you, you, you know you're in a situation. Then this is where one tempo or removal spell can punish Scott so hard here. Because you see he's also played a cultist staff yeah, there. Which he's going to sink mana into next turn to yeah, whip well, onto. Or if you just kill that field creeper, he, he just doesn't even have the option. Yeah. You know? I mean, but like a card like Just the Wind would be just savage here. This is a big turning yeah. point. Seth thinking about what to discard here to the wall. Warf Infiltrator. He's got a card, a likely card. Survive the night. I feel like we've seen more of that card in played <laughs> in with one pack of Shadows of Innistrad than we ever did in triple shadows silent observer is a nice card here for seth manfield still not good enough though <coughs> oh yeah no with, not with the cult of staff yeah it's six power it does it, it does buy him at least a turn from a chump block and he's churning through his library pretty quickly as well with that wharf infiltrator oh. oh wow so this is two four five is that enough 
It's only three power, right? I think he just wants this guy to live for a turn here. Yeah, that does seem to be the case. But Scott wow, does that's not, not going that to work. Happen. He has confront the unknown. Wow, that he was a real a scuffle. Yeah, makes a uh, makes a clue. Still, Seth Manfield drawing very live here, especially with the Wharf Infiltrator, as uh, he is going. He has a good shot to try to find some type of removal spell, and even if he doesn't, Scott still has to hit him for two turns. Okay, discards Guardians of Pilgrims, makes a token. His teammate help, obliges him by putting it into play that for him. nice of him. And, oh, look wow. at this. Spectral Reserve. That's huge. That that could two easily buy tokens, Seth the time he needs. Two life. We talked about this a little bit. It's like the card's almost like a time walk sometimes when you get into these kind of racy situations. That two life can be very significant. Yeah, and it's and it's realistically, it's 14 life here. <laughs> right? I mean, it's it's two hits from that monstrosity plus the two life wow that was big that was really big time all right four mana for scott lip courageous outrider yeah. seems fine it's a little bit of an engine going for his deck yeah, depends on if he hits doesn't it <laughs> yeah he, <laughs> he looks at some field creepers or whatever <laughs> did he hit something yeah, he hit a millennium inquisitor okay that's good he's got an equipment too No sitting back for Scott Lip. In comes the field creeper. Yeah, is it chump block o'clock yet for Seth? He can take a hit from this and go to five. Though if he knows he's going to be chump blocking anyway, he may want to just be proactive with it. This has been a really good game. The tension is really strong from Scott's side too because he's applying good pressure but also <laughs> has, has put himself <laughs> in positions both games where removal spells are, are punish him really yeah, hard. Yeah, it doesn't leave himself a lot of room. No, it's, to, he's uh, kind of at the mercy of what Seth has in his hand and how he plays. But, but he also applies enough pressure where Seth doesn't get to have five turns just to find it, uh, you know, the answers. Yeah, you, you talked about something earlier. You talked about the idea that, uh, you know, Seth may have realized he was the control player in this matchup. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, do you, do you think that one of the things, you know, I know you're you, you're a little leery of, you know, decks like Scott sometimes. Is that because Very. they don't have the option to yes. sort of turn around yeah. and play the control player? That's it. Like, he, it, like, Scott is just in one direction hard, and if it works out, great. And it's a reasonable direction to go. That's the good news. But if it doesn't, if your opponent has a bounce spell or a removal spell at the right time, the game ends. You know, if if, if Seth was like, you know, choking restraints your your field creeper two turns ago, Scott would just be on empty and just be dead. Right. And I hate that, you know, you, you, you push the boundary so far that if your opponent has one of the spells that everybody plays every copy of that they ever get, that you can lose. That That's what I don't like about it. What I do like about it is that if your opponent doesn't have it, you apply massive pressure. Okay, so it Seth wasn't Trump Trump blocked Trump. the uh, field creeper with one of his spirit tokens. Wharf Infiltrator looking great this game, by the way. Yeah. It has generated a lot of virtual card advantage, we call it, right, where he gets to see cards and sort of filter through his deck, as well as just a lot of Eldrazi. Press for answers. Press for answers, your courageous outrider. Oh, wow. Seth's like, mm, I might no longer be the control. Yeah, he <laughs> looks like he has uh, decided to turn the corner here, and there's good reason. This is a lethal attack oh. that he's lining up. He starts to go for the attack. Scott Lip reached for a blocker. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that Seth already knows that, that Scott, I mean, he must block, right? Like, yeah. that's the first thing is that he has to block because right now he's attacking for eight damage, and Scott's only at, at, at seven, so it's a must trade. He's going to block one of the tokens. And this would put Scott down to two. But Seth are you going to crack the clue? Try to find a pump spell? What are you, what are you up to here, Seth? Something. Oh, this is so close. <laughs> God. <laughs> right, he is going to sack the clue. Spin the wheel. 
trigger this means the damage is happening. So those die. Yep. You take five. And it is hard for Seth to die from this scenario if he can uh, make another Eldrazi, which he's not doing here. Scores an island. But he's got oh, a creature. Oh, wow. Spectral Shepherd. This is very well played by Seth Manfield. He has needed every little bit of it, too. Wow, insane. God, that is crazy. You know, Scott drew a Faith Bear Paladin here, and unfortunately for him, Seth still kills him because <laughs> he can attack with two different flyers and a skulk creature. Yeah. And even though one of them is going to get blocked by the field creeper, he still takes exactly two from the remaining spirit and the wharf infiltrator. How funny would the pump spell be on the wharf infiltrator <laughs> so that you could So block that you it. could actually block it. Yeah. yeah Unfortunately, doesn't, doesn't Scott was happen. out of cards. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. That wow. was a close one. Well played, Seth Manfield. Scott had tons of pressure, got away with the... Uh, you know, the, the, the built-up field creeper for quite a while. It really did a lot of work for him, but just fell short. Yeah. Meanwhile, Ben Stark has evened things up against Jan Cassander. We pick things up early on turn two. Deranged Whelp. I card really like really that I card. was just going to say, I know that that's a card you really like. Yeah, I mean, look, it's not fancy. It's right. a 2-1 with Menace. It's, it's not a, you know... Super fancy card, but it just tends to do a lot of work. Yeah, and right as I say that, yeah, Jan yeah. has exactly the best card against it. Like I will collector. collect your teeth. Some dog teeth? Yeah. Uh, oh more no. teeth. There's more teeth oh. in, in Ben Stark's uh, future here. Plays the fox. I think I like Jan's deck. Yeah. I do too. Also, it's it's a very controlling deck. I, I we talked about it a little bit before we went down to the feature match. But he's got Emrakul in this deck. Like yeah. he's going long game. He's getting stuff in the graveyard. He's killing your creatures. Tooth collector gets in, and there's a stitch wing scab. Stark falling behind here. Yeah, pretty quickly, too. He decided not to block that last turn. So the Collector got in and knocked him down to 17, and now the Stitchwing Scob in the air is a, is a real clock. That's a that's a major problem here for Ben if he doesn't have an answer yeah, for especially it. Especially when your removal is ride downs. Yeah, <laughs> good point. Yeah, he can, he can ride down uh, Thraben Gargoyle, but I don't even think Jan is that worried about that. He needs to make mischief here. That would be fine. I think, he, I think he might have one. Be very good if he does. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. That that actually takes care of a lot of his problems here. Follows it up with a Falcon Wrath Gorger. Wow. A great turn. That Tooth Collector is just the scariest thing on the battlefield. <laughs> Kills literally every single card that Ben has played thus far. <laughs> Even the token. Game three. I think I'm just swayed by the number of permanents on the side of the board. I'm like, wow, Ben looks like he's in great shape here. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, if, if you were brand new to magic, I would tell you that's a very good way to figure out what's going on. You know, you life totals being less important yeah, than that, yeah. especially in limited. Players are still shuffling up on our main match between uh, Seth Manfield and Scott Lamp.
you know, also like Ben has more creatures in play with fewer lands and like a lot of land in play there for Yon. I think he might have another one this turn. No. All right, five mana. That Dark Salvation? Oh, wow. Wow, I really like it. What it's a huge hell. blowout. And see, look, how many creatures he yeah, has. Yeah, now all of a sudden you <laughs> like this side again. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing a trend here, BDM. <laughs> wow, that is a savage blowout. Because those zombies are very legitimate against Ben Stark. It, it is going to be incredibly difficult for him to come back from that play. His Dark Salvation is Black XX. Mm -hmm. uh, you put X zombies into play, and then you basically do minus X to a creature. Minus X, minus X where, to a creature. Yeah, minus or X, minus X, where equal to the number of zombies you control. Yeah. So he got to just take down the fox there and leave himself with two two twos facing Bet down a devil and a gorger. Yeah, it's fantastic. Okay. We'll keep you updated on what's going on here, but we are going to go right now back to Seth Manfield versus Scott Lipp. There's the news constrictor. That's probably his best card. It, it's on his short list, at least. He also has a lone rider that he can flip pretty trivially. He has built this deck in some ways around the lone rider, even though he's only got <laughs> the, the aptly named lone rider, which is uh, not perfect. But news constrictor is definitely one of his best cards. And again, we see Scott with a proactive game plan, two drop into three drop, nothing from Seth yet. Just the curve, yeah. yeah does he have a, nope, no intrepid provisioner, but. Wow. He's in for four. If he can go two, three, four, and Seth has done nothing. Oh, he had nothing. Now he's got a draw skull shield mate, that's why. Seth have mana issues here? I haven't seen an island out of him yet. He's yeah, passed he the turn and going to wow. discard. This is looking great for Scott. And this, by the way, is where the deck that Scott has drafted really shines when your opponent stumbles. You know, there's control decks that your opponent stumbling means that they're going to find their way out of it eventually. Not so here. Scott is going to slam the door on this game as quickly as he can. Which means a Lunark Mantle well, he must is be just in the a, future. He is just a gambler. <laughs> this guy <laughs> just... I'll just try to get two Lunark more damage in right now. on the Drag Skull Shield Mate yeah, in I mean, for four. He's got to assume six, that Seth has eight. nothing if he didn't have anything to turn prior, Seth's and that's game. Six. He drew an island. Yeah, I don't think it's going to matter here. What could he have, even with an island? If he gets rid of the Drag Skull Shield Mate, he's dead. Because uh, Scott just dumps a bunch of cards to the news constrictor plays a silent observer that's yeah, game this should be game now that's just game yeah scott all he has to do is remember what news constrictor <laughs> does <laughs> seth is going to block the drog skull shield mate and then scott just says pitch two cards to this news constrictor yeah <laughs> he doesn't even have to pitch him he's like look i, I can i can pay for him <laughs> kill you and seth manfield falls by the wayside brian Braun doing congratulations bbd you did it the buddy world championship wow what a sweat they didn't make it easy on the guy did they no <laughs> <laughs> yeah we started out the weekend joking a little bit about uh seth like, well you know if seth manfield wins this thing he can really make it difficult for brian Braun Dewin. and then you know lo and behold seth manfield you know is playing in the semifinals he just lost in the semis so falcon wrath reaver is getting in the way of tooth collector here Ooh, that's a Gavini on Hallowed. This is this is bad news for Ben Stark. Jan Cassander makes his Gavini on Hallowed into a 3-5. He's got those two zombies from the Dark Salvation still attacking. Yeah, that just hit Ben down to 13. Scott Lip awaits the winner of this match in the finals. There is the Vidlin Pack Outcast. The Vidlin Pack outlet Outcast, yeah. That's, I, look, I, I, assuming that, that Jan is on nothing here, that's that's good. 
It's like that <laughs> yeah. that'll that'll stabilize things up quite nicely. Thank you very much. And by the way, that's not a, a safe assumption, that's but a, that's a sweet card with ride down. Oh yeah. Double trample. Yeah. We noted we noted earlier that Ben has three copies of the uncommon ride down in his deck, and it's a little bit tough because Jan has actually taken the initiative from Ben uh, after that dark salvation, and is actually the one who's the aggressor, which makes it very difficult to leverage a card like ride down. If your opponent isn't compelled to block you, right. then it doesn't do much. Five mana. This four. is big. If this gets rid of the outcasts, it doesn't. No, but it gets back the mi the the midnight scavenger to get back the tooth collector. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. You know, Ben is going to know it's coming. He's got a devil that does stand a good chance of dying here, but it's not the end of the world for Ben. The outcasts might have been just what he needed. Yeah, the imp the important thing is that it, it got you have to pump the brakes a little bit here on attacking. Totally gives him a turn to untap. Draw something. A little bit of breathing room yeah. here for Stark. Tooth Collector does... No, no. We don't have uh, Delirium yet. It's a Voltaren Duelist, and it's yeah. the sad version. The one that doesn't attack. It's the Voltaren Duelist. <laughs> yeah. So he plays effectively a vanilla 3-2 here. Ben is one mana away from transforming the Vilden Pack Outcast now. It costs seven. Tooth Collector kills the devil. And I think Ben yeah. just goes upstairs with yeah. it because it's not going to kill anything else anyway. But if that's all that Jan comes up with for this turn, once again, Ben's in a position where he's got some breathing room. Yeah. He's a terrarian. Yeah. Okay. Two like cards in hand for Ben. And and for Jan as well. Yeah. Go, he says. Jan's storing a card on the table, though. Jan has three to Delirium right now, and it's still going to stay at three even after the Terrarian yeah. hits the, the graveyard. But this favors Jan in a big way. Oh, oh my! <laughs> Tamio, field researchers here. I did not see that coming. Tap those down, and this is uh. not going to win the game this turn, but he will next turn. <laughs> Actually, I actually take that back. That is 13. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It is actually exactly 13, so Ben is going to need a way to interact here or the match is over. Wow, Terrarian powering out Tamio. Ben extends the hand at Yan Cassander, who will be playing in his first Pro Tour next weekend, is also going to be playing in his first uh, GP Finals. Wow. Incredible stuff down there. That was just incredible. So it's going to be Scott Lip versus Jan Cassander in the finals. Low to the ground. Uh, Green-white Scott Lip. There you get a look at him. Uh, 